Welcome. We are going to do some hot. Oh my. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. Holy fish sticks. That was fun. So, we are going to do some hot lunch today in preparation for Big Cat tomorrow. I am going to work on a potato salad and then I'm going to show you about um, corn dog muffins. So, real quick, I'm just going to prep my potatoes. I've got these guys rinsed and they're dry. So I want to just get them into bright, into yeah, bite-sized pieces, and then I'm going to get them into boiling water. So right now I'm just cutting up my potatoes, and they will be put into the boiling water in just a couple minutes. That one doesn't look super awesome. So I've got about three pounds of potatoes here. And we're getting ready for hot lunch tomorrow at Big Cat Rescue. So potato salad and corn dog muffins are on the menu, as well as strawberry cake, which I've already made. So, so this weekend is Memorial Day weekend, which is sort of the official kickoff to summer. And I wanted to take a minute to just kind of think about Memorial Day weekend and talk about it as nice as it is to have a three day weekend and as nice as it is to spend time with family and to be outside and to grill and to have a good time. We also kind of need to remember what this day is about. And that is the people who have sacrificed everything for our country for our ability to have a cookout and grill and be with our family. So I just kind of hope that you guys will take a minute at some point this weekend and, you know, have a nice thought about those, those people, the men and women who fought and died for our country. Um, but also, you know, if you know someone who's Son of a nutcracker, that one just jumped right out of there. Sorry. Um, if you know someone who has a loved one or a family member who, who did, you know, pay with their lives to save our country and to protect our freedoms, uh, go ahead and reach out to them. See if they're doing okay, see if they need anything. Maybe they just need someone to talk to. Or maybe they don't. Maybe they have plans, but at least this way, we are grateful for those who have fought for our country and paid. And that includes animals. We've got a lot of dogs that, you know, have been part of the armed forces and have given their lives to protect the men and women who protect us. So, yeah. So, now that... I've said those very important things. Let's talk about getting ready for summer. I feel like Memorial Day is sort of the unofficial kickoff. Eh, no, maybe the official kickoff to summer. Um, you know, June 21st is the official first day of summer, but I feel like Memorial Day is really when we start to of get excited about it and here in Florida it's been so stinking hot that summer is already here I think um, Andy went out today he had to go to work this afternoon um, he's back now so that's why our camera was jostled because oh he was uh, getting up into his stool where he likes to hang out but he went out today mm -hmm. and so did I actually and holy fish sticks was it hot Man, was it hot here. It not was hot. It still is hot. We're both just inside, fortunately. So, but yeah, I feel like Memorial Day is that unofficial summer kickoff. And that's when we all kind of start thinking about school ending and summer vacations and going camping and... 
Um, Want to answer a question? Sure. Was there a question? Yes. Uh, Wendy wants to know, are these vegan corn dogs? No. I'm actually making omnivore corn dog muffins. But if you... <laughs> but if you want to make them vegan, you absolutely can. It's just a little bit of a modification, which is mostly just um, swapping the butter for vegan butter and then using like vegan milk and vegan dogs, which you can find in your grocery store. I guess we have some in the fridge, don't we? Oh yeah, we have vegan dogs in the fridge. I made some for me earlier. Sorry, I just had to take my butter off the stove so it can cool down a little bit before we use it in our corn dog muffin mixture. Move these tomatoes because I don't need them right now. I don't need them today. When <laughs> Wendy says they make vegan hot dogs? Yeah. Um, there's a couple different brands, but one of them is called Field Roast and they make like a vegan frankfurter. You can check out their website and they'll give you an option of if you can like do a you can do like a store locator. Any other questions so far or is people people just kind of joining us now? Well, looks like people are just starting to join on in. So um in about a minute, you might want to explain what you're making again. So Sounds you, good. You well, right now I am just cutting up potatoes for our potato salad, which will be vegan. So I'm just making my potatoes kind of bite sized. They don't need to be huge, they don't need to be too small. You want them kind of just nice bite sized. I like mine a little bit smaller. Sometimes when you buy potato salad from the supermarket, um, they come, it comes in like big like chunks of potatoes. And I do love potatoes, don't, don't get me wrong. But I just prefer my potato salad and my potatoes in general to have a smaller bite size. It just makes me happier. So in this case, what I would suggest is just use the potato salad that you really like. There's no rhyme or reason for this. Uh, I think Andy has posted or will be posting the recipe for the corn dog muffins, but I didn't include a recipe for potato salad. If you guys really feel like you want this recipe, um, I can look into kind of creating it for you and we can get it posted as well. But um, this is just a recipe that I sort of make on the fly. It doesn't really have <laughs> measurements, so to speak. Ooh. Ooh. What you got there? You got something? Oh yeah, Christina. Uh, could you modify this also from muffins to balls and then deep fry them? Oh, you know that sounds really interesting. Oh, we're gonna have to do that. I'm gonna buy a deep fryer. Oh my gosh. Uh, my sister bought my mom an air fryer for Christmas. Do you want to maybe give that a go when we're home? No. We oh. need a deep fryer. We don't need a deep fryer. No, we don't We don't need a deep fryer. You don't need three deep fries? Potatoes. <laughs> we don't need a deep fryer. You're adorable, but we don't need a deep fryer. But yeah, that actually sounds pretty good. You could, yeah. You would have to make sure that your cornbread batter is not as like thin. It would need to be a little bit more stable. I guess I should, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. What are you smirking about over there? Wendy agrees with me, I need to be Oh, really guys? Come on now, whose side are you on? Although I will say that you will probably end up cleaning said deep fryer, so we'll discuss it further off camera. All 
All right. But yeah, I would say if you're going to deep fry, if you're going to do, if you're going to go that route, make your batter a little bit on the thicker side, maybe cut back on some of that liquid, just so that way you don't end up with really runny batter that just falls off. And don't forget you would have to dredge your hot dog in all-purpose flour so your batter sticks. Mm. Don't forget about that. Are you using kernel corn in the batter? I am not. I'm not because one of our interns does not like corn. Um, and the hot dog is going to give it that kind of texture. It's going to give it a textural component. So I am not. But you could if you wanted to. Um, definitely. You know, like I always say, you guys kind of need to use what you like. And do what makes you happy when you're cooking. So if you like extra corn, toss it in. This potato is kind of weird. You know, I think it would be unrecognizable if we had a deep fryer. You in this deep fryer. Oh, <laughs> thanks guys. Now I'm never gonna hear the end of the deep fryer. Oi. I don't know what I'm gonna do with you. All right, so I'm just gonna finish cutting up these potatoes and then I'll get started on the cornbread muffins because they'll need to go into the boiler or they'll need to go in the boiling water. Sorry, it's so hot outside that I need to make sure I'm getting hydrated. Mm. Good question, Wendy. Um, is it expensive to be a vegan? It absolutely can be. It can be. If you choose to pick things like pre-made food, you know, like anything that's like pre-packaged. So there's a lot of stuff that they're making now. So like Beyond Burgers, I love them, but they're expensive. And um, it can be, it can be expensive. But it, it can also be inexpensive. When we go to the grocery store now, we spend less than we used to, right? Yeah. Because um, we're not buying as much meat. Andy still gets meat in his diet sometimes, but we're typically not buying as much meat. We're buying more vegetables. And when you buy things that aren't pre-made and you make them yourself, you can save money. You know, those, those meals that I made on Tuesday night at the party house, I, wor I worked on the budget and I think it came out to like $37 for all of those meals. Uh, that, well, your mom is uh, making a case as to why a deep fryer is awesome. Mom, and, uh, whose side make, are you on? They great donuts, good french fries, and uh, they're vegan. He can't eat donuts because he has a gluten intolerance. You don't know what you're talking about. Uh, and then, uh, is there also a diabetic friendly version of uh, what you're making? I don't know because I'm not exactly sure. I haven't done a lot of research on um, a diabetic diet, like what the restrictions are, what the requirements are. So I don't know. Um, That's a good question, but I, I honestly, I don't know um, if you can give me a little bit more information about what you can and cannot eat. I might be able to make something up on the fly here real quick, but I don't know, because I'm not too familiar with the diabetic restrictions. Oh, really? Uh, well, tonight I am doing something that is also my hobby that is not involving cats or cooking. I actually uh, ballroom dance and I have for, geez, when did we, we got engaged in 2005, 2006, uh, 13, 13 years. I've been ballroom dancing for about 13 years. And tonight we have the 
dress rehearsal for a show that we're putting on for the Tampa Bay Fred Astaire Dance Studio region. And so tonight I'm going to go to dress rehearsal. Even though I can't perform in the show because we will be out of town, the owners of the studio are very, very wonderful and they are letting me participate in one of the numbers just until dress rehearsal tonight. And it's a group number. So then I'll do that tonight and then tomorrow it'll be back to Big Cat Rescue where we'll be giving tours and hanging out in the gift shop. Kathy wants to know, do you ever rest? <laughs> uh, I try to, but no, no. Uh, typically if I am awake, I am thinking about food, truly and honestly, like planning food and that kind of thing. So no, I don't usually, I sleep some, but pretty much on the go. All right, I'm gonna drop these in the boiling water real quick and then we'll get started on the cornbread muffins. So I will be right back after dropping these potatoes. All right, we'll set a timer so I don't forget. Let's see, we'll do five minutes. We'll give them five minutes and then I'll give them a test. So I'm gonna get this out of the way. started on cornbread muffins. Um, so I have, you know, some, some hobbies. When I'm not dancing, cooking, or taking care of cats, I like to sew and I like to read. Um, I like to hang out with my husband. Mm, good question, Tammy. <clears throat> uh, what got you into cooking? Do you remember the first dish you made completely by yourself? And your mother is watching. Um, so, well, I've always sort of been cooking. I, I remember being little and my mom and my grandma would be in the kitchen and I would be hanging out with them. And um, so I've always sort of been in the kitchen and been cooking. I don't really remember my very first dish that I made on my own. It could have been chili, it could have been a pie. Those are the two most vivid memories I have, but I could be wrong. I don't remember. It's, I've been cooking for so long, cooking and baking really for so long, excuse me, that I I just don't really remember when I started. Um, Mom, do you remember when I started? Because I don't. No, but she did say nice canisters. Oh, thanks, Mom. Those were my grandmother's canisters. So a lot of what I use and what I do harkens back to my mom and my grandmother, uh, just because they're amazing women and my aunts too my aunts both my on my mom's side they both really have and my uncle so basically everybody on my mom's side has really kind of um, helped I don't know blossom me into this cook baker person mom says maybe age five or six Five or six is when I started in the kitchen. All right. Thanks, Mom. Appreciate it. I figured she might remember better than I would. All right. I need my liquid cup measure. All right. So I'm just getting my ingredients together now. I'm going to run into the refrigerator and get my milk and my eggs. I'm using almond milk because I don't have any cow's milk on hand, but if you have cow's milk, use cow's milk. I'm going to grab an egg and milk and I'll be right back. And milk. Do we have any other questions yet? Mm -mm. No, not yet. Okay.
yes. I am starting my dry ingredients for the corn uh, for the corn muffins, and then I will get my wet ingredients going in just a couple minutes. Actually, that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, so I need to make sort of a buttermilk for my so that my baking soda will react. So if you don't have buttermilk on hand and you don't want to go buy buttermilk and use half a cup or a cup, just add a little bit of vinegar. It can be apple cider or it can be um, white vinegar to your milk. It can be your almond milk or your cow's milk and that will help react with your baking powder or your baking soda, your leavener. I can't remember if I used this or the teaspoon. Oh well. Just jump in. It's just, I've said before, cooking is perfectly imperfect. So, I'm gonna go ahead and get my dry ingredients going and just kind of whisk them together. You can whisk them with a fork or you can sift them together with a sifter if you have it. I'm going to check my potatoes in just a second. So I'm just sifting my dry ingredients together. And I've got my butter that I've melted and cooled sitting in this pot. So I'm going to come back for that in just a second. But I do need to check my potatoes. I'll be right back. While I'm doing that, do we have any other questions, babe? Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, Kathy says, that's what I use, Jiffy Mix. Oh, Jiffy Mix. That's a good idea, too. I use the recipe that my mom and my, that my mom used. So, uh, let's see. so right now I'm just making a well in my dry ingredients. You can kind of see here, it's hard to show you without losing it, but you just kind of make a little well in the dry ingredients so you can put your wet ingredients in. Add my butter, which is four, uh, four tablespoons, so half a stick. When I'm making cornbread, not in a muffin tin, like when I'm just making just plain, straight up old cornbread, what I like to do is I like to take a little bit extra than four tablespoons, and I like to... Um, put the butter in the pan that I'm using, that I'm gonna use, put it in the oven while the oven is preheating and heat it up. So that way I end up with, um, you know, a pan that's been preheated, which is nice because then you put your cornbread in there and it like makes these beautiful crusts, this beautiful crust on the outside. Almost like brownie edges, if people like, you know, if you like brownie edges. Um, and then it also, ooh, it also gets the, um, the pan grease at the same time and it melts your butter. So it's like a triple whammy really is what it comes down to. So I've got my one egg here. I'm just going to crack it and I'm going to crack it into my Cup measure. Toss this out. I'm going to wash my hands. And then I'm going to just whisk my egg a little bit. Mm. 
What's up? All right, so Wendy asks if you use regular hot dogs or Little Smokies. Oh, I have not tried it with Little Smokies, but I have always used the regular hot dogs, which you guys will see in just a second. Are Little Smokies the awesome ones that people put in, like, the little crock pots? Uh-huh. Those are incredible. <laughs> yeah, those are Little Smokies. Let's see how we're doing here. We got some time. I'm going to preheat my oven. So tomorrow, I'm not exactly sure how many tours we have at, this, at the sanctuary. I don't know. But I don't know if it's going to be busy or if everybody's going to be at the beach. But either way, there's always stuff to do at Big Cat. All right, so I'm going to get this stuff out of the way. I'm just going to do a quick dry on this because it just makes things a little bit easier. All right. So tonight after this, I'll be headed to my dance studio where I'll be performing with my group, my fellow dancers. And then tomorrow off to Big Cat to drop off all of our hot lunches. Mm. Wendy wants to know if the test came back on Ash. Have you heard anything? No. I hadn't. No, I didn't know that they had run a test on Ash. Um, no, I, that's kind of above my pay grade, really, if we're being honest. Yeah. In, in most cases, uh, you all hear about it before we do. That's actually pretty true, yeah. I'm going to grab my hot dogs. Yeah, Luana and her team does a very good job pushing that information out because you guys care so much. Yeah. Is Luana with us? Luana is not tonight. Oh, okay. Luana, some of her team is with us. Hi, awesome. team. All right. So I've got my hot dogs here. I'm using a beef, an all beef hot dog. And I made a batch before the show because I wasn't going to have enough and I wasn't going to have time to make a second batch after we were done tonight because I got to go dance. So right now I'm just going to slice these. You can see I'm making them kind of bite sized. About like that. And then I'm going to take my scooper here. And you don't have to use a scooper. I just, it makes things easier for me. I take a scoop and I just, whoop, almost lost it there. And I just scoop some batter into each of these mini muffin tins. for Ash and Cinder to get to meet. I don't know when that will be, but I'm excited for whenever that will be because I think they'll be really awesome friends. I don't think it'll be a good time. And they're both in the new rehab hospital, which is really cool. We are so grateful for our donors who have been able to make that rehab hospital uh, a possibility for Big Cat because it's a great place to keep our our rehab bobs that might need a little extra time um, and also given the fact that we given the fact that our rehab our our Big Cat rehab hospital has been kind of busy lately um, it's nice to have that extra space so, hey, here's an interesting question. Let's say 62,000 pounds of raw beef were just recalled, right? Because they were. Hmm. Uh, what else is a great Memorial Day alternative for grilling? Ooh, 
Well, I mean, we did make those kebabs at the volunteer challenge. Um, if you want to go back and look at that recipe, uh, you could do chicken and fish kebabs with veggies. That would be amazing. Um, trying to think. Pulled pork, if you wanted to do like a pulled pork, like a barbecue pork, that would be delicious. Let's see. I'm trying to think. Um, corn on the cob is always a good time. And hot dogs, like if you wanted to do like turkey dogs or pork dogs. Um, trying to think what else? Chicken, pork, turkey, not beef, uh, fish. I feel like that covers all the bases. Lots of vegetables. Vegetables. You can never go wrong with vegetables. Um, trying to think if I've missed anything, but I feel like well, that covers. What about alternatives to meat? I mean, there's Beyond Burgers, which are freaking amazing. So good. You can do veggie burgers, like black bean burgers. Those are good. There's a lot of great recipes for black bean burgers. Um, do a great big giant pasta salad. That would be great. Um, you know, that would be a great way to make a big meal for your family and your friends pasta salad. We did a pasta salad a couple weeks ago. That turned out really well. Um, you could do wraps, sandwiches. You know, you could do like a build your own sandwich bar. Don't forget the watermelon because that's always awesome in the summertime. I got a couple food questions here. Sure. All right, I'll go with the food one first and I'll get the personal one. Uh, random question. Is there a reason you use a stainless steel bowl versus a glass mixing bowl for three or four bread? Personally, no. Um, it's just, again, what my mom used to use. It was also clean. It was clean. Yes, <laughs> it's clean. Um, <laughs> sometimes it's just what's clean. Sometimes it's just what I'm used to using. It doesn't, there's no real rhyme or reason sometimes for, sometimes for why I do things. And sometimes there's a reason for it. In this case, there's no reason. Um, let's see, we have uh, Wendy wants to know uh, what kind of books you like to read. Um, Janet Ivanovich is my favorite author of all times. She is hilarious, like laugh out loud in the middle of the night, wake up your husband while he's sleeping, hilarious. Um, she makes me laugh all the time. So Janet Devanovich is my favorite author. I like mysteries a lot. Um, I have a little bit of a nerd side, so I do like um, some fantasy with a little bit of sci-fi. I don't like too much sci-fi, but I did really like The Martian by Andy, what's his name? Andy Wire. Andy Wire, that was a great book. I loved that one. And then I do like vampires, but not like Twilight vampires. Um, but I've liked vampires before. It was cool to like vampires. So, yeah. Lovely. All right, I set that for nine minutes. I'm gonna get this out of my way here. Uh, your dad says uh, you need to use the hot dogs to make a smiling face. <laughs> oh, my dad's hilarious. I like him. And then he also says that uh, while you're cutting, make sure to hold up three fingers and scream and hide the other two. <laughs> oh, that man is hilarious. Uh, he has a twisted sense of humor. Uh, the other thing here is, uh, hey, uh, what do you think of sausage in these? Oh, I think sausage would be great. Uh, I bet if you talk to Nico, he would say that it should be Italian sausage, uh, because that's his jam. I'll be right back. I'm just getting my potatoes drained. Feel free to do a little dance over in the camera, babe. Do a little dance? 
hands over the camera? In the camera. In the camera. Oh, too late. You missed your opportunity. <laughs> Here, will you put this in the sink, please? Yeah. Thanks. And then will you grab me a big bowl, please? Oh, yeah. yeah. And Plastic. some mayonnaise. Flash plastic? Plastic is fine. Mm -hmm. Let's see. You got the camera, so we'll go glass. Mm. Big glass. Good point. Mm. One bowl. Thank you. And what else? The mayonnaise, which is up there because it's unopened. How did I get flour flour all the way up there? Oh, I got it. Never mind. Silly man. All right, I'm gonna put my eggs and my milk away. Jeez, sorry, babe. Just rammed the uh, refrigerator door into the light. Sorry. Potato salad. Oh, so good. So good. Yep, oh, I'm leaving for Andy's. What? Yep, Andy Extra. Preparing sweet Italian lasagna. Cheers from Italy. You're going to Italy? You're leaving? Andy! It sounds amazing. I'm it sorry. does sound amazing. I haven't had lasagna in a while. It sounds great. You can't eat lasagna. You have a gluten intolerance. You'll puff up like a blowfish. I do know you, and I love you. I care about you. <laughs> mm. All right, so kind of like we did last week, I'm gonna use some shallot, and I'm going to grate it, because it just makes things so much easier, and then we're not getting big, giant bites of onion. So it gives us that onion flavor without actually you know, again, massive bites of onion. That lasagna sounds delicious. Still. Ooh, this shallot hey. is kind of rough spell. Bella's gonna send us something. Ah. Oh. Keep my eyes open. All right. Thank you, Bella. Thanks, Bella. This looks better now. That first layer of the shallot was kind of rough. All right, so what is a shallot for the people that don't know? That's kind of a foreign thing. Okay, so a shallot is in the onion family. It's a little bit smaller. It's a little bit milder. Um, so it's not quite as abrasive as like a purple onion or a red onion. Um, so it's going to be a little bit more, it's going to be kind of dialed down from an onion. And it's just, it's a nice way to get that oniony flavor without holy fish sticks onion breath. Because <sighs> uh, a lot of us still have to work with the public after lunch in the gift shop at Big Cat. So I have to kind of remember that you probably don't want to smell our onion breath when you come up to the cash register. And uh, we don't want to smell each other. We already smell bad enough during the day at Big Cat Rescue. Let's not add onions to it. I don't smell bad. That's because you never go outside. Oh, it was a good burn. So I'm just grating this, and then I'm going to put everything into this big bowl, and I'll mix it with my mayonnaise in a minute. Do you have any other questions? Anybody making anything good for dinner tonight? Shout out when, you know, shout out what you're making or what you're making this weekend for the holiday. It's a very messy and dangerous process, I'll be honest. Be right back. Let's see, we have um, people making stuff right now. Uh, Bella is making big ziti. Ooh, we got a lot of pasta going on tonight. I like it. Um, I don't know where Kathy 
Ryan's going with this, but I'm assuming she's eating raw yellow mustard right now. Uh -huh. um, Did you burn yourself, Kathy? Because raw yellow mustard on a burn is the way to go. Not kidding. It sounds weird, but it soothes the burn. Uh, Kara is asking for volunteers to come help her move. Uh, Kara, where are you moving to and from? Just basic details. We don't need all of the... You don't want yeah, creepy address, people. No. Yeah, no address. Mm. Kathy Ryan has a good question. Um, you just now cook the potatoes. I usually cool them before I make potato salad. Should they be warm? You can do it either way. So... The way my, my dad's mom used to do it was she would make a warm potato salad because they were German. Um, but I find that when the potatoes are warm, and this is my personal preference, that they absorb the flavor a little bit better. Um, it's just what I personally found that works, but that doesn't mean it's right or wrong. And that doesn't mean that waiting until the potatoes are cool is wrong. It's just what I have personally found that works. So if the cool potatoes is, you know, if that, if you like the way that that comes out, great. And I'm going to wait for them to cool a little bit. They'll just, you know, they're not going to be steaming hot like they are now. Well, they'll be a little bit warmer, but, um, but I had to do my hair and makeup. So <laughs> I ran out of time to cook the potatoes. Ordinarily, I may have had them done a little bit sooner. Uh, Karen Nash is uh, making uh, cavatellini with broccoli and chicken parm tonight. Dude, all of the pasta tonight. I like it. You guys are making me hungry. My mouth is filling with saliva. Kathy, uh, send us a recipe for that. That, that sounds awesome. Kathy or Karen? Uh, Karen, Karen, I'm sorry. Can't read. Yeah, that sounds good. Do we find out where Kara's moving? Yeah, uh, Utah. She's up in Utah. She's going on the street. Okay. Any Utah people? Shout out. Maybe come help Kara. Because we're all, you know, we all could use some extra love. Ooh, that shallot got me. Woo. I'm gonna do a little bit more shallot just because um, it's a big batch of potatoes. Holy fish sticks. Oh, hang on. Stand by. Cornbread muffins. these. I'm not as dexterous with these. Sweetie, have you seen the other ones? I have not. Mm. Oh, they're right here in front of you, silly. They're right here in front of me. <laughs> Thanks. There we go. All right, check those bad boys out. Ooh, fancy. All right, so while those cool, I'm just gonna finish working on the potato salad. And it's really just, again, it's kind of just the recipe that I throw together. So I just grate some shallot, I add some fresh dill, because I love fresh dill and mayonnaise, salt and pepper, and then the potatoes. So it's really kind of a simple recipe. And I just kind of make it up in my head. So there's really no measurements or ratios. I just go with it. Any, uh, any questions or anything, babe? Uh, let's see, so uh, Karen Nash is gonna be at Big Cat tomorrow, taking a tour. Oh, Karen, what time is your tour? What time, what's your tour? I don't know. You taking a, a fancy keeper tour, feeding tour? Uh, 
Because we'll be there tomorrow. Both of us will be in the gift shop all day tomorrow. Say, come say hi. Oh, right, the 10 a.m. tour. Good call. <gasps> Maybe I'll be your tour guide. I don't know if I'm giving a tour or backing up a tour or signing off on a tour, but I'll be there. And Andy will be at the, at the, at the desk. He'll be in the yellow shirt. I'll be in green. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Get back to hey, now. Awesome. Well, that's exciting. We'll see Miss Karen tomorrow, hopefully. All right, so she's in at 10 a.m. And, uh, yeah, you know what? Uh, Karen, just come find me, and I'll make sure that you're on Bridget's tour. If I'm giving a tour, because I may be signing off or you're backing up. Well, but I don't know. I'll be in charge. You're giving a tour. Oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> I'm happy to sign off a tour. So, a sign off. We talked about this last week, but um, we have sign-offs in the gift shop as well. So I've talked about, last week I talked about sign-offs on the keeper side of things, but there's also sign-offs on the partner side of things. Um, so in the gift shop, you have to get signed off on your tours, which means you have to make sure that the information you're giving is reliable, credible, you're following the rules that have been laid out in the class that you have to take, and then, oh my gosh, that one is powerful. What are you grading over there? The shallot, which is like an onion. You have beautiful onion I know, shallots. I know, I forgot. Would and you I didn't like wanna... me to do this for you? No, I didn't want to ruin my makeup. I know it sounds super girly, but I never wear makeup. And when I put it on, I actually want to keep it on. Um, hot Belgian waffles. Oof. These things are amazing. Well, I'm done now. Well, now, Bridget usually doesn't wear these because she's a toughy tough girl. I sport these all the time. <laughs> you guys are bearing witness to an amazing event. And the funny thing is, so Bridget went through this streak of, I need to rhinestone everything that I own. It's true. And so, uh, I proudly wear swashy rhinestones on my uh, onion glasses. It's true. Yeah. It's very true. Although you're losing some stones, baby. Yeah, you know, that's okay. Are you just going to rock those now, or what's the scoop there? Maybe I will. Okay. I think I will. I need another beer, and I'll let you take one. <laughs> I'm feeling fancy. He's feeling fancy. Oh, my. Uh, I married that, ladies and gentlemen. But, oh, jeez. Hey, sweetie, can you go check on George, please? He is just having a, a conversation with someone in the bathroom. Probably himself. So George had acupuncture this morning, um, and he got his B12 shot, and he's been feeling fancy today. Yeah. Hi, George. Who are you talking to down there? Gonna meet, meet the peoples of Facebook? Yeah. You're not named, no one's, you, you know, this, this group isn't named after you, but. This is George. He's our old man. Hi, handsome. He's also insanely intelligent. Which it's really true. Really actually very creepy. Like opening doors. He'll talk to you all day long. He knows his name. George. If you've ever been the Big Cat Rescue and you have a chance to talk to Beecher, he'll mm -hmm. talk to you for hours. George is kind of the same way. Hey, here. Here you go. Here you go. You can't jump up there. I <laughs> like that you're still squirting the onion goggles. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. Okay, come on. So that's George. He's our old man, and he's in the big, he's been renal failure. Um, <clears throat> so we've just been working with our vet to do acupuncture with him and to just kind of keep him as comfortable as possible. We check his levels, his, you know, his levels. We do blood tests about every six months, but he gets acupuncture mm, once a month usually. And then he gets a vitamin B12 injection as well. Don't love on the tripod. <laughs> the tripod doesn't need love. Hi, handsome. All right, so that's a lot of mayonnaise, or so it seems, but that's a lot of potatoes. It's three pounds of potatoes. And that just may not be enough mayonnaise. Because I think I'm a southern girl at heart. 
and mayonnaise is awesome. Do we have any questions, comments, concerns? I think we kind of derailed off the food for a moment there. Yeah, it's true. I'm trying to come back to the food now. All right, so real quick, what are you making again? Because uh, we got to get back to the food. Right now I'm working on potato salad. I just made uh, corn dog muffins. I pulled those out and now I'm working on my my potato salad potato which is going to have fresh dill i'm just pulling this and i'm going to put it in my strainer so that way i can take the dill and rinse it and then i can chop it uh, and then i added some shallot to my mayonnaise and then i have a which I'll talk to you guys about in just a couple minutes. But right now I'm working on just the fresh dill. If you don't have fresh dill and you wanna make this salad, you can use dried dill. I would say just make it a little bit ahead of time so the dried dill has time to kind of soften a little bit um, and it you know, has time to marry. In my opinion, if you can make any potato salad in advance, even if it's just 24 hours, 12 hours, six hours, like even if you're going to something for you know, an afternoon barbecue and you want to get up in the morning and make your potato salad or your pasta salad, that gives the, the flavors time to kind of meld together. Um, and it just always kind of tastes better when it sits a little bit. Sometimes if it sits too, too long, then it's kind of far gone. But this recipe, you don't have to worry about that. Hey, uh... We had a question about, uh, about George. Uh, how is acupuncture working out? It's working really nicely. Uh, his system sort of ebbs and flows. So some, some months we do really well and others not so much. So some months there's um, a limited amount of food consumption. He loses some weight. And then, you know, he unfortunately gets sick to his stomach a lot. And then there are other months where he gains a ton of weight and eats like a champ and doesn't get sick very often. So, but I, all in all, I believe the acupuncture is helping him and uh, he actually does really well with it. He loves it. It's one of his favorite times actually because he loves our vet, his vet, Dr. Donna is awesome and he forever knows her as the lady with the nip. Now, why, oh, okay, you get the answer. Yeah. <coughs> What's that? So I was going to ask, why does he love Dr. Donna so much? Oh, the nip. It's all about the catnip. All about the catnip. Did you post that? Um, that recipe for the corn dog muffins, babe? Yeah, yeah. Um, if you want the recipe for the corn dog muffins, all you gotta do is click that link that I'm posting and go ahead and uh, just pop your email in. And the reason that we want you to pop your email in is it sends it directly to your mailbox and you will receive the recipes ongoing uh, every week. So uh, just pop your recipe right into that link I just posted and you'll uh, you'll, you'll get you'll get this uh, this with this one, right? If the recipe is not enough reason for you to pop your email in, uh, I do believe, is there gonna be like an amazing picture of me as a child? Uh, yeah, oh, actually, a couple uh, of them. the link I'm posting is to our brand new blog. And so if you scroll down to the bottom of the blog, you will see a um, bunch of photos of Bridgie. She was adorable uh, as a child, but you'll also see where to put in your first name and your email, and we'll send it right over to you. One of those is me holding a kitten, so yeah. Yes. We go we go way back to um, we go way back to my childhood. I mean, I've had cats my whole life. I don't know if my mom is still watching, but yeah, your mom's still here. Uh, she, I'll be right back. Hang on. My mom grew up always wanting cats, and my grandmother was not interested in having cats. So my mom decided when she was an adult, she was going to have cats, and oh boy, did she. So not only did she have cats, but she introduced me to cats, and I don't know, I've just always loved them. 
So I've had cats since I was a little girl. We had this amazing orange tabby when I was little. His name was Albert. Play it rocks. Huh? Yeah, it rocks. That was Polly. That was our dog. Oh, okay. No. Albie was this wonderful orange tabby. He was a big guy, and I loved him. And he would go sledding with us, because we lived in Wisconsin, so my parents have a sledding hill in the backyard. And we would, we would go sledding, and Albie would climb on the sled with us, and we would go down the hill. And he just took it. He just ran with it. And he just seemed to love it. He was such a great guy. I remember my, my little brother, Tim, has a ton of hair. We both do. Hey, really quick, uh, so you mix the stuff up, right? Yeah. What are you putting in now? Right now I'm putting in salt, and then I'm gonna add some pepper. And what do you mix up in there? Fresh dill and shallot right. and mayonnaise. And what's that? This is freshly gra cracked black pepper. I can't see you. You're in a weird position right now. This is power cord only so long. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but I remember one time my brother was laying on the kitchen floor because he's a weirdo. Love you. Mean it. Um, mm. And Albie was inside because it was a cold, cold winter night that night. He preferred to be outside, and we had so much land. Um, but I remember he, Tim was laying on the kitchen floor, and Albie came over and plopped down and grabbed my brother kind of on the side of his head and started grooming him. Apparently he thought my brother was dirty. It makes sense to me. All right, so here's my secret ingredient. A splash of apple cider vinegar. That's all there is. Nothing crazy. Just a little splash. Boop. Just gives it a little bit of something that makes them go, that is amazing. mix that together all right so ladies and gentlemen I made a mess but it gets messy in the kitchen there you have it there's the uh, potato salad base and now for the moment we've all been waiting for potatoes you yeah. Potatoes are awesome. We eat a lot of potatoes at my house. We live off potatoes. It doesn't help that I'm freakishly Irish. Swear I mean, it doesn't God, work. I'm no Irish. You can't be that lucky. Sorry. You potatoes, got you, potatoes you, make you Irish. No. Dark beer and potatoes make you Irish. I swear to God, I read it on this guy's blog. It said <laughs> dark beer and potatoes. Mm, that's not what makes you Irish. Maybe maybe your dad told me that over pizza. <laughs> All right, so I'm just mixing this all together. And if you want to come over here and give this a taste test for me, please, I would appreciate that. Yes, yes I will. Okay, because then you can tell me if you think it needs more salt or pepper. So just give me a second. Let me get this all mixed together. <laughs> Grab a fork. I said fork. No, what are you, like three? <laughs> All right, grab it. They're going to be warm, so be careful. It's terrible. I need more. Mm. It's Is it good? It's really good, yeah. Enough salt? Actually, yeah, don't change it. It's All really, right. It's really good. Coolsies. Wow. The, it's the pressure of on screen food production. So, so yeah, so that's kind of the gist of it. That's, that's what's for lunch tomorrow, along with a strawberry cake. Um, I made that. It's just a yellow cake mix. I put some fresh strawberries down on the bottom, and then I'm going to cut them into squares and add a little bit of uh, whipped topping, whipped cream on the top. So that's what's for lunch tomorrow in the gift shop. And some of the interns are going to be getting that in the uh, Keeper Cafe. So I said it earlier, and I just kind of want to say it again in case people missed it. Um, you know, I know that this weekend is 
an, a long weekend and we get to spend it celebrating the beginning of summer and being with family and friends and barbecuing and going to pools and you know having cookouts and laughing and drinking and being merry um, but let's also remember what this holiday is you know Memorial Day is about the people who gave the ultimate sacrifice so we can have um, the freedoms that we have here in the United States so if you want to just take a minute at some point over the weekend and you know have a quiet moment of thought or prayer or whatever you practice that I think that would be really awesome or if you know somebody who lost a loved one while serving our country go ahead and reach out to them and just say you know we're here if you need us if you want to spend time with us and then raise a glass to those people those amazing humans that have given their everything so that way we can do stuff like this. Here, here. So, happy Memorial Day, everybody. Real quick. Yeah. A couple people are asking, how would you feel about celebrating this? Do it. Yeah. Add some extra crunch. I actually almost thought about it and then I just didn't because, although I might do it later tonight. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see if I sleep tonight. If I'm awake at 2 o'clock in the morning, I may post an Instagram photo of me adding celery. But yeah, go for it. Or um, some people like to do hard-boiled eggs. You could add hard-boiled eggs to this. Yes, Bella. Remember, make the call of the wild. Yes. You know what we're talking about? Go to bigcatrescue.org and you'll see. Yes, also make the call of the wild. It's a great... Thanks, Bella. That's spay awesome. New to your past. Spay and... Yes, spay and neuter. <laughs> this is Bob Barker from The Price is Right. So don't forget to spay and neuter your pets. Oh, that's good. That's good. All right. If you guys have questions or need anything, send us a message, comment. I might not respond to you right away tonight because I do have that dance event tonight. So if you comment or have a question and I don't get back to you right away, just know that I will get to you, I promise. It just might not be until tonight. Don't forget to like and follow us on Facebook. That way you guys are keep, you know kept up to date with what's going on. And check out the blog, chickenandnugget.com. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. Comment, send a message, send an email, Bridget at chickenandnugget.com. Um, otherwise, have a great weekend. Stay safe. Watch out for crazies. Make good choices when you, if and when you are consuming alcohol. And uh, don't drink and drive. Be careful. And remember to be grateful.